Praise the Lord again, brethren. It's a wonderful opportunity to be here with you. Last week, we have done a subject on you have run well. And the lesson is speaking to me and to you. We are doing well. We are running well. That was the lesson last week. This week, it have a different headline. Because one sister asked me, Brother Gif, you show us that we are running. But I want to know how to win this race. And we want to get to the, get to last week that you that were not here, I see a lot of names that were not here last week. So I want to go back a little bit to let you know what we had did last week. This race is not a physical race. I don't know how many of you had glimpsed the Olympic, but as I glimpsed, as I was saying last week, I saw the runners, I saw the swimmers, I saw a gentleman from America, and Jamaica have the best of these fast runners. And as he ran, he ran, and he came in, and he thought that he had lost the race. He turned around and hugged the Jamaican, and thinking that is the Jamaican that had run, that had won the race, because he knew they are so fast. But when the bell go down, he was the one that win the race by inches, by maybe just a toe. He had just won that race. And there was a second race with him also. But this race, he had COVID. And he tell himself, no matter, I have COVID. I'm going to carry home a second gold medal. And that man ran and he ran and he ran and he ran. And he broke the race. And he fell to the ground. And he fainted. And the doctors have to pour down on him and bring him back to life. He did not get the gold medal, but he came in second. That to tell you how much effort, although he was sick, he had put into this physical race. I can imagine how much training. I saw him on TV not too long ago. They were interviewing him. And they asked him, they was asking him question about his life. As a young man, how could you dedicate all this to running? And he said, this is my life. Remember that word. This is my life. He said, this morning, my friends had called me that they want me to fly down Florida with them. They had a party down there. And as he goes to say yes out of his mouth. He remember at that same time, he have to train his friends. What would you have, what would you say? Would you have left training and go to that party? He said, no, I have to train. This is how this man was disciplined for the physical race. What about us on this spiritual journey, Church of God? What about us in this spiritual journey? Do you know that it's a race that you are running? I was in the bathroom sometime today. And I was thinking about it. 
And I said, it's a long time. Since 1973, I was just about 19 years old when I was called to come to run this race. It's a long time. I'm still running. I may not as be I may not as be fast as I was before spiritually, but I'm still running. And this is the this is not about how fast you are or, or I am. This is enduring to the end. Because the Bible said, he that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. So brethren, tonight is enduring to the end. But I want to recap the last week lesson. And I want something here I want to show you that can unbug you from, from winning this race. We're going to go back to our first scripture and one verse in Hebrew 12 and verse 1. And there is a word I want you to write down this evening. Because this is the first step, one of the first steps when you get into this race that you are advised from the Apostle Paul. Just a gift. Hebrew chapter 12, verse 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. Oh, hallelujah. 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 We are going into a spiritual battle. And this is the advice of the Apostle Paul. Sin is heavy. And he's saying to me, he's saying to you, if you have to enter into this race, this is one of the first thing that you have to drop off. Wait. And as, as I went down into the lesson, I told a story about three men who ran away from the army. Maybe when I send this message out, you would listen to this first part. So the, one of the first thing here, before you even get into the race, you are going to be told heavyweight, and this heavyweight is sin, and it can beset you or throw you out from this race. So we are in this race, and we study so much about running this race. And in this same verse, the Apostle Paul advises us that gift and all of us, we have to have patience. Because you're going to fall. You're going to stumble. And you have to get up. But if you don't have patience, you would lie down there or you would slip off of the road. So I want to get into how we can win this race. How we can win this race. This is the topic tonight. A lot of us are here a long, long time ago. And we are running. And, and some of us are tired. Exhausted. When are you going to come, Jesus? But tonight, I really want to get in to win this race. How can a man win this race? The first lesson is that we have to drop off the heavy weight. And let's see how a man can drop off. You cannot run this race of yourself. 
when you are on this spiritual journey, you have to become spirit. What do you say, Brother Give? Okay, hold that for me. Hold that. Just hold it. Don't run away. You have to become a spirit man to run this spirit race. On this race, the road is narrow. And everyone that is there is spirit people or spirits in itself. The spirit of, the, of God or the spirit of demons. And the spirits of demons are there to beset you. And they're going to look into the bag that you are carrying to see if you did empty everything out of that bag. And this is what where he's going to interfere with you with. But if you are a spirit man or a spirit woman, that means you have left everything. But that does not say those spirits on this journey are not going to interfere with you. So look at how you have to become. We are going to go to Colossian tree. And Colossian tree again, the Apostle Paul is going to advise us how we are going to become to win this race. Because, because we cannot run this race of ourselves, we cannot run, win this race of ourselves, we can't win this race with flesh and blood. Hallelujah. Look what how you have to become. Colossians 3 and verse 2. Colossians chapter 3, verse 2. Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. Oh, hallelujah. We are beginning to run this race. Enter in with me. The journey is long. It is far. It's not hard. If you have to win this race, affection or your mind, your mind, just look into it at this moment. Look into your own mind. Are you weary? Are you tired? Are you discouraged? Do you want to drop out? No. So it's the mind. So God is dealing with our mind. When he is dealing with us, he doesn't deal with us with our head. He deals with the heart, the mind. So he's saying, Paul is saying that we have to set our mind on things above. We have to give God our mind. And not things here. You see, remember it's a race. And a race have everything to do with your mind. And if your mind tell you, you cannot finish it, this is what going to happen. If, the, if your mind is on what you have here on earth, whilst you're running this race, you want to slow down. You're going to drop out. I remember Jesus met a few men. And he called them to run this race. Some said, I just bought a few cattles. I can't come now. I have to see about them. Some said, I've just married a new wife. And you know what the scripture said. I have to see about her. So the things that are here in your life, 
and my life can beset us from this race. I can imagine when those men were running this race for that piece of gold, even self, they had marital problem, or even self, their children was in the one of their child was in the hospital. But for that moment, for that season, the psychologists and all the people that taking care of them would have been seen about their mind that listen, your mind have to be on this race about this time. So the, 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 the thought here is, listen, you cannot run this race with things that affect you. It's going to be too heavy. Remember, Satan is running this race too. And the advice is here that we have to set our mind above. So that if our mind is set above, that means we are praying. We are asking for help. And help coming from above. Our needs our needs coming from above. So the Apostle Paul is saying, give, set your mind above. That means a lot of praying, a lot of fasting, a lot of meditation. Oh, hallelujah. I wonder if you see what I'm saying. It's a, listen, you have to become spiritual. You cannot be normal man and run this race. You're not going to make it because this race is not for the normal humans. If it is for the spiritual minded man, the spiritual minded woman. So he's saying, let us set. That means we are ready. We are ready to run. But the mind is what carries us. And what is on this mind? Is this mind have weight on it? Is this mind have things? to beset us on it. Oh, hallelujah. So the apostle Paul is training us. Set aside those things. The heavy weight to run this race. Look at verse three. Look at, look at what I was saying before. Look at what I was saying. Look at how, what you have to become to win this race at verse three. Colossians chapter three, verse three. For ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ. Oh my God. I sure that you have read this many times and it becomes a memory verse. It's not practical. But this race is such a serious race. I want you to go back and see how many people that you have known drop out of this race. I remember 12 of us get baptized. It was supposed to be 13. One never show up. I always wonder what happened to that guy. That Sunday morning, he never shows up. But 12 of us get baptized. And only three of us are here now. The others are dropped out. You know why? 
because they did not put verse two into experience. Set your mind on things above. They were still playing here with this world. They were still a part of this. No, you can't. That's verse 3. Colossians chapter 3, verse 3. For ye are dead. Look at this. Look at this. To win this, to start this race. You have to become dead. What, what do you mean, brother, Pastor Giff? What do you mean by that, Brother Giff? To start this race, you must dead. You must be dead. This is what the Apostle Paul is saying. Go ahead, Sister Giff. Colossians chapter 3, verse 3. For ye are dead, mm -hmm. and your life is hid mm -hmm. with Christ in God. Look at what happened here. This is not talking to the physical man. Because the physical man will not even know what he's speaking about. These are keys to win this race. Keys to win this race. First, he's saying you have to be dead. And your life, my life, this is our spiritual life, have to be hidden in Christ, in God. Are you with me here? So you're no more a physical man. To live with God, you, be, you have to become Somebody that is born again and is very, very spiritual. So, so remember, you are on this race. And if you are on this race and, and you are not hidden in Christ, look at it. And then we have to lock in God. So that means nothing can beset us. But before we get to this, we have to die. Before God accepts us in his bosom and we become a part of Christ and a part of God. Oh my God, it's a process. It's a process. And let me show you this. I want to show you this. Go ahead, Sister Give. Colossians chapter 3, verse 4. When Christ, who is our life, mm -hmm. shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. You see how this happened. Because we, are, we were always hidden in him. Because we were always with him. So when he comes in glory, we are there with him. Those that are dead is going to rise. Those that are alive are going to be caught up in the air to reach him. Because we are alive. Not physically. The change is going to come at that moment. So spiritually, we are going to be, be caught up. That means the race is finished. Because we are hidden in him. Let's read it again. Colossians chapter 3, verse 4. When Christ, who is our life. What is it? He becomes our life. So the upper verse saying, we are living in him. He is us now. We are not running this race now. He is the one that is running it for us. This race is dangerous. Many start. 
many been, been fulfilling. The five foolish virgins, they was on this race. Many others all run out on this spiritual race. So let's go back to the verse. Colossians chapter 3, verse 4. When Christ, who is our life, mm -hmm. our life, he becomes our life, go ahead, shall appear, mm -hmm. then shall ye also appear with him in I'm glory. saying to you again, if all these three verses fulfill on you, that means you have won this race. Because now you have appeared with him. You are dead. But let's go down a little more. Let's go down a little more. Colossians chapter 3, verse 5. Mortify dear. Watch it. Watch it. He starts over now. He's telling us now. He was giving us more advice. He's telling us what to do to live with Christ and Christ living with us. Read that again for me, Sister Gift. Colossians chapter 3, verse 5. Mortify, therefore, your members. Oh, hallelujah. Look at the word. Kill yourself. Not physically, but spiritually. You have to dead. You cannot live the same life that you are living. This life that you are that you were living have to dead. It have to be killed. Remember when you went down into the bottom of the sea or the river. You were dead. You were buried. The old man supposed to stay down there. This is what I'm talking about. So no carnal man cannot run and win this race. This body has to be mortified. You know, like a mortuary. And this is spiritually I'm talking about now. This is spiritual. You have to enter into the morgue. You have to put this old body down there. You have to raise, according to the Bible, a new man. And this new man is who is going to run this race and win. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Read again, Sister Gift. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Colossians chapter 3, verse 5. Mortify, therefore, your members mm -hmm. which are upon the earth. Fornication. Mm -hmm. Watch it. The baggage. The things we are carrying. And fornication these days is not lying upon a woman. It's lost in your heart. Are you with me? You don't have to lie with her anymore. You just have to see her and imagine you are doing something with her. Is the mind. Everything now is the mind. Brother Gabriel, write that down. So when you're doing it, when, you, when you're doing this message, it's all about the mind. To win this race is all about the mind. What the mind is on. Read. Uncleanness. Mm -hmm. Inordinate affection. So what is unclean in you? The only thing can be unclean in you is sin. Go ahead. Evil concupiscence and covetousness which is idolatry. Hallelujah. I need you to look at the dictionary. See what all of these means. 
see if by mistake that you are carrying any one of these diseases that can affect you on this race. We have to dump these things. Let's go down a little more. Colossians chapter 3, verse 6. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Oh, hallelujah. You heard the Apostle Paul advice. Let's go some more to, to, that he should even give us some more advice how to win, win this race. We, we want to go to Romans 8. Romans 8, and I think verse 8. Romans chapter 8, verse 8. Go ahead. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. <laughs> you can't win. You can't run this race. Let's go to verse 6. Romans chapter 8, verse 8. Six. Watch at it. Watch at it now. Confirmation. Advice. For to be carnally minded is death. Mm -hmm. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Nice. This is who God wants in the race. A man who have life. And a man who have nothing to bother about. A lot of peace. And these are some of the things that are going to get us off the race. Because we doesn't have life. We are not jolly and happy. We are not thankful to live. And we have no peace. You remember? The first lesson, he said, have patience. So to, to, to run this race, peace must be there. Let's go over that again. Romans chapter 8, verse 6. For to be carnally minded mm -hmm. is death. Mm -mm. They can't win it if you, if you are carnally minded. This race has too much spirit. Too much spirit is on this road. They're going to push you off. You're too weighty. You're carrying too much baggage. You're too soft. You're going to hurt quick. Hallelujah. Am I speaking to someone? Hallelujah. Let's go. But to be spiritually minded. Watch at the mind again. Watch at the mind. This is what God wants on this race. You have to look into it now. You have to look into your mind now to see if anything that you shouldn't be carrying on this race, how to win this race. You have to get a clear mind. You must not have any distraction there. And this is the thing that they, that, 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 why we, most of us lost this race. This is the thing why most of us fall down. This is the thing that why most of us are so slow on this race. Slow distraction. Go ahead. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. You see the mind? You have to put on a different one. Remember, the first one is buried. So this one come up with life, love life, love activities, and peaceful. I was telling my sister this evening about a brother in our church. He said he has so much peace. He has, I think, two or three daughters. And he said if he's eating his rice and peas, and someone come and said, they have killed your daughters. He said he has so much peace. 
that he's going to continue to eat his rice and peas. And when he finished, he's going to ask the question, what did you say? You may say he's selfish and foolish. What he's saying to me and you running this race, you cannot get a heart attack. Because all of this is going to happen. A lot of worries. A lot of problems. But you cannot carry it. So the man has learned the trick. He's running this race with peace and nothing shall disturb him. So he's saying here, go ahead, Sister Keith. Romans chapter 8, verse 6. For to be carnally minded is death, mm -hmm. but to be spiritually minded is life. This and is peace. where you have to, this is what you have to bring to this race. Spiritual minded, because Satan is not flesh and blood. When he come to you, he might come with somebody with flesh and blood, but when he attack you, his spirit, would it be words or deed? Because what comes out of that person's mouth is not flesh and blood. It's spirits that come out to hurt you on this race. Let's go down, Sister Gift. Romans chapter 8, verse 7. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. He can't win this race. He can't even come on this race. The carnal man. Oh God, don't sit down there with him. Don't relax with him. Don't be too much of his friend. He's going to pull you back. He's going to discourage you. He's going to make you break rules. That carnal man escaped from him. And, they, and Satan see you escape from him. Satan is coming. And he's running this race. Like if he's spiritual too, you know. He's on this race too. But he's physical. He's running with demon spirits. Let's go. Romans chapter 8, verse 7. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. Mm -hmm. For it is not subject to the law of God. Neither indeed can be. You see, this is what he's saying here. On this straight and narrow road, there are laws, there are rules, there are regulation. And if the mind is carnal, it would not obey the rules of this race. So the mind have to be spiritual to subject itself to the order of this race. It's like the, the physical race. You can't run across a man. You can't pull him by his shirt tail and try to pull him back. They have laws. They have rules. So is, so is, so is God. Let's read that again. Romans chapter 8, verse 7. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. He doesn't obey rules. The carnal mind doesn't obey rules. So he's not going to obey rules on this race. Oh, hallelujah. But look at what happened. Go ahead. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither Indeed. No, indeed. he can't. So for me and you to run this race and finish it, there are rules. And some of them we just pass. That's why I said, write down. 
write down things that you, you think, listen. Don't be, you see, the five virgins, they were virgins. But they stopped obeying rules. The foolish ones. They were not looking at their own lamps. They were looking at someone else's lamps. So all, they all run out. And they have to turn back and go for oil. They break all the rules. Church of God. The Holy Spirit is speaking to us. Mind your business, your business this evening. Mind your business. The race is not for the swiftest, but for he that endure it to the end. Don't let the air beat you off. As Paul said, he's running and the air is pushing him backwards. You have to get that power. You have to get that authority. Now you got to become spiritual. So I, I want you to look at it very spiritually. Every step that you make, let it be God's step. That all way. That all method. You're angry at everything. You're sad at everything. You're sorry at everything. You're discontented of everything. No. No. <sighs> Let's go. Romans chapter 8, verse 8. So then... They that are in the flesh cannot please God. Can't run this race. This race is not for the fleshly man. If he want to run, let him go out and run with those Jamaicans. Train his body to run flesh and blood race. Our race. Pastor Gabriel. Is fasting. Oh, hallelujah. Is mm -hmm. praying. Is reading. Lots of medication. Cut down the busyness. Do you have people to feed? Don't let them just call it that name behind your name because they give you it. It must be in your works. People like us have to pick up people on this race. When Satan break their foot and they start bawling, Pastor Gabriel, pass the gift. I need help. You need help too. But you got to throw them on your shoulder. You can't be a weak layman to throw a man on your shoulder, one on one on your left shoulder, one on your right, and you're crawling like Jesus with the cross. Oh, hallelujah. The race is long. The race is a long race. Look at this verse. No. Romans chapter 8, verse 9. But ye are not in the flesh. Hallelujah. That's why you could take up men and that's why you could help one another. You become a spirit man. You become a spirit man. That you could stretch out, throw two men on your shoulder, and you become spirit. And so you're winding through this, this narrow road yourself and, and pushing others to go. 
But if you if you are flesh and blood, you can't fight up with this race. Test yourself this evening. See where you are. Maybe you should have been further in front. Paul said, sometime we were supposed to be teachers, but we're still drinking milk. So the man who is drinking milk, he's further behind. Somebody had to be there to feed him. I hope and trust that he will get strong because he's in the faith a long time, but he wasn't doing what he's supposed to do. How are you doing? Are you on this, are you on this spiritual journey? Are you on this in this mystical kingdom? Are you hidden in him and he in you that when he comes in glory, you would be there with him? You will not hear him if you are not in him. You, are, you will not hear him when he comes. You would hear the second bell or the second trumpet because you, are, you did not win this race. The first trumpet is for the man, is for the woman who have run it and continue it. Let's go, Sister Gif. Romans chapter 8, verse 9. But ye are not in the flesh, mm -hmm. but in the spirit. Oh, hallelujah! Judge yourself, Gif. Are you in the spirit? What bothers you? What pulls you back? Spirit man, spirit woman, are you there? Are you growing in the spirit? How much people are you carried on the street and narrow way? How much men and women you have on your shoulder? <laughs> Go ahead, just give. Romans chapter 8, verse 9. Mm -hmm. But ye are not in the flesh, mm -hmm. but in the spirit. Mm -hmm. if, oh, that's the only way you could be on the street. Go ahead. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Listen this again. Verse 9. Romans chapter 8, verse 9. But if... Romans chapter 8, verse 9. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Mm -hmm. If so, be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ... He is none of his. Oh my God. This is not for me to judge you. You have to be sure that the Spirit of God is living in you, is carrying you. Unless you have a talk with him and he talk back to you. Do you still have those dreams? Do you still have those visions? Do you still have that eyes to see? Sister John is going to go into, into trouble and you're going to warn her? How is that spiritual life? Is he dwelling in you, Church of God? Is Christ dwelling in you, that spirit? Oh, hallelujah. How much 
does this spirit talk to you? Shut your mouth. Don't go wrong gear. Sometimes we talk too much. We're not listening. To run this race, we have to listen. We have to take advice. We have to change our dirty clothes. Put on clean spiritual dresses. Let's go. Romans chapter 8, verse 10. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. <laughs> But the spirit is life because of righteousness. Hallelujah. Live man running this race. Spirit man running this race. This is what he's saying here. Read it again. Romans chapter 8 verse 10. And if Christ be in you. Mm -hmm. The body is dead because of sin. Mm -hmm. so you clear that out. Mm -hmm. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. righteousness. So we have to watch our works, although we are not saved by works. We have to be careful in running this race. We have to be careful of our good works. We are dead to sin. We are alive in Christ. We become spirit man. We become spirit woman. Let's go. Romans chapter 8, verse 11. Look at verse 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies you see, by his spirit that dwelleth in you. You see the operation? You see how you're going to win this race? Let's, let's look at this verse. This is my last verse. Look at it again, sister, if you love it. Romans chapter 8, verse 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. So look what happened here. When Jesus died, God sent his spirit and raised Jesus from the dead. Is that same spirit when we went down into the watery grave that killed the old man and raised up a new man in us? That same spirit. So we become spirit men, spirit women. Why do you think when Peter said, silver and gold, I, I, I have not, but this I have in the name of Jesus. Peter become a spirit man. No physical man can't make a man walk. He went into a house and she was dead. Peter put out everybody because he was spirit man. And he raised the little girl from the dead. This is how we have to become. Stop the little life, Christian. Stop the little life, Christian. Think deep. See what these men have done. See what these great women have done. And we have to become like them. We have to stop hearing. We have to stop seeing. seeing. We have to know how to close our ears. Close our eyes. That is when we become spiritual men and spiritual women. What a verse. 
One more time. Romans chapter 8, verse 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Quicken. Make alive. So in this race, we have to be alive. And we have to run this race with patience. We have to run it whilst we are alive. God bless you in Jesus' name. Father God.